Google Picks After Dark is sponsored by Snug Books, an independent bookstore serving Northeast Baltimore and beyond. In addition to featuring new books for all ages, the store also carries cards, stationery, gifts, games, and more. Visit snugbooks.com to shop online, learn more about the store, read our latest newsletter, and find a calendar of events, or come browse the store in person. Snug Books is located at 4717 Harford Road, next to Zeke's Coffee in Hamilton, Laurelville. There is free parking behind the store and open hours are Tuesday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Hey everyone, welcome to my new podcast and the next episode of No Food Picks After Dark. My name is Chris Franzoni and you can find me hiding behind the camera of Eat More Be More on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, this is the next podcast in a limited series where we're interviewing the most interesting people in the Baltimore food scene. Um, and my next guest is someone you've definitely heard of. Uh, and if you haven't, you've definitely seen him shucking oysters around town. Uh, I think I think you're literally at every charity event that has food because I've been at multiple in a night yeah. and, and you're always there, which is great. And I, I don't even know how many oysters I've I've eaten at the various events. So, yeah. So you're a, a restaurateur, a crazy mother shucker, probably the best oyster shucker in Baltimore, in my opinion, a local celebrity, a philanthropist, an all around good guy. OK. I'll take it. Nick Shaman it's, it's, of the local oyster. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Thanks, Chris. This is uh, really cool to be here. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks Thanks for coming and, yeah. and, and being a guest. I appreciate it. So, um, well, This is cool. Like, we've got cameras and microphones and yeah. uh, it feels... But no headphones. No headphones. I'm sorry. I, yeah. I didn't think that, like, you could actually do a <laughs> podcast without headphones, but he's got headphones. It's technology these days. Yeah. Right. And, cool. we were, and we were just talking about where podcasts come from, and we think it's from the <clears> iPod iPods Probably. used to be able to carry a hundred songs in your pocket. Right. Now we've got, uh, we can listen to anything, anything. anytime, from anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, it's strange. Yeah. I you... miss old time cameras, with, like the flash cubes. <laughs> we'll bring back the Polaroids. Do you remember photo back... mats? <laughs> yes. They were yes. always in like the parking lot of uh, the shopping center and you right. put your film into the yeah, cube. Yeah, or the and... disposable cameras Yeah. that you'd have to take. And you never know, like we have some at home and we're afraid to develop them. Because we have no idea what's on them from like two decades ago, but we kind of have to still. Or you would find some ones and put it down your pants. And I mean, I, I, I guaranteed that that's going to be on there. Yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, oysters. Yeah. How many? I asked you this the other day, and you know, you had the great idea that, that we should start the podcast like this. How many oysters do you think you shucked in your lifetime? I forgot that we had that conversation, and I have no idea. Yeah. Um, I I was trying to like do some math. Um. Probably around a half million, give or take. A half million. I mean, it's it's impossible to 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 tell. Well, I yeah. mean, we've sold a couple, you know, probably close to five million oysters amongst our restaurants and the farm over the last couple of years. But personally, you know, it's hard to keep track. Yeah, and well, I think the other night you did six hundred. Yeah, like, I mean, a, it's not uncommon event. to go out and you know, like you said, at a at a charity event or something right. and just bang out a thousand oysters in a couple hours. That's impressive. Um, and you still have hands. <clears throat> I still have hands. I <laughs> carry my knife with me always. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, I don't, I'm not at the restaurants shucking oysters every day. Um, yeah. But yeah, like you said, we're out and about. Um, I'm kind of be bopping around from all the different restaurants. Sometimes I'm in Mount Vernon, sometimes I'm at Locust Point. So, um, because right, you yeah. have those two spots, True Chesapeake. True Chesapeake also. Oyster Company, right? How did it all get started? Um, <clears throat> I I just, uh, I think I started watching Food Network, I don't know, 50, 20, 15 years ago. <laughs> and I was like, well, I want to I wanna do that, something. I think it was, well, I used to watch Top Chef and, right, right. you know, Anthony Bourdain show and all that sort of stuff. Um, and... Um, I just decided that, you know, I was going to do my own thing. Um, I started doing pop-ups in, pop -ups in uh, Hamden yeah. once a month uh, at the corner BYOB. It's not there anymore. But, right. uh, yeah. you know, it, it took a couple months for it to catch on. And after like yeah, three or four months of doing it, people started showing up. And I would like bring a boom box. I would get a couple cases of beer and 
give beers to everyone. <laughs> and like before you know it, there were like 50 people hanging out on the corner just partying. So um, that's kind of how it started, you know, a table and a, uh, a table and a cooler and a cigar box. Yeah. And so, and so from there, I mean, now you were sourcing your oysters from somewhere else. And now you have your a whole farm. We have a farm. You're doing um, it was I was doing doing the solo thing for about two years, until I met my uh, one of my business partners, Patrick Hudson. Yeah. Um, and somebody said you got to meet this dude. He just started an oyster farm. So I had just started a oyster catering company, if you will. He had just started a farm. Um, we got together for a beer at Cafe Hun. Nice. And um, we made a pact that we would work together and sell 100,000 oysters in a year. And I said, you're absolutely crazy. And we and did, it did it after it. like six <laughs> months. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. So, yeah. Now, um, you know, I'm a part of True Chesapeake. He's a part of Local Oyster. We're mm -hmm. all kind of one big happy bivalve family if you will yeah so how does the farm how, how does the farm work what is the what is the process for harvesting oysters <clears throat> um it's it's just like any other farm uh, we buy seed um you know millions uh probably half uh you get a bag of seed it's right. like a half million oysters uh you put them into we have a nursery at the farm and it's kind of like uh like a like a row of big um, aquariums, if right. you will. And then we just kind of feed the babies right, with, yeah. uh, you know, water pumped in from the bay. They grow until they're big enough to go into cages. And we send them out into uh, St. Jerome's Creek. And they live out in, in the creek for about two, two and a half years, sometimes three years. Some of our bigger oysters live out there for about five years. Oh, wow. We have some big boys. <clears throat> Um, and they're tended to regularly, you know, they get pulled from their cages a couple times a, a year, cleaned off, sorted. And then, um, yeah, when they're ready to go, put them in a box, ship them to Baltimore and we shuck them the next day. So that's, uh, kind of how we do it. That's a lot. I mean, so that's a ton of different, of, of oysters. How many different kinds do you have? Uh, essentially, essentially, it's one 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 oyster. Gotcha, they okay. just have three different names. Okay. So we call the little guys huckleberries. Um, our flagship oyster is the skinny dipper. Right. Yeah. And um, the chunky dunker is that's our. There are five year olds. Um, they're so really they, the difference is in the age. It's the size. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, they're hand every oyster before it goes into the box. Someone touches it with their hands and decides right. what color box is going in. And, um, you know, the, the chunkies that was, they, they were kind of like a happy accident from COVID because for a while there, we weren't selling any oysters because everything shut down. Right. And then all of our two, three year old oysters turned into four and five year old oysters. And now we kind of have a, it's, it's kind of neat watching someone try to eat one of these things. They're pretty, I mean, they're pretty massive. Yeah. It's like the size of your head. It is. Yeah, your maybe, head's not maybe that bigger. Big, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and do they do they each serve a different? I mean, no, you you can get them on the half shell mm -hmm. at the restaurants. Yep. But is each one different for? Do you use them for different types of cooking too? Uh, yeah, actually, um, you know, uh, the small the the petite we call the petite yeah. oysters, you know, pair well with yeah, champagne and you know Ooh, formal occasions. I like it. Uh, I think we use the huckleberries uh, for our croutons on our oyster Caesar salad at both the restaurants. Right. Um, we roast uh, the skinnies um, and then the the big boys. You know, we, we used to fry those, uh, which, I mean, gosh, you, you get a ginormous fried oyster. It's so good. It reminds me like my grandma used to pad oysters. Are yeah. you familiar with padding oysters? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a lost art. Nobody does it anymore. Yeah. Um, we would love to do it, but it's just so time consuming. Well, and explain what that is for the listeners. Uh, so, yeah. It's it's essentially where well, you get a um, uh, anywhere between six or eight smaller oysters and you pad them together. Yeah. Um, and like 
uh, when I was little, like I always looked forward to, it was the oyster supper. I think it was like at the Lutherville Volunteer mm -hmm. Fire Department. And my grandmother <clears throat> would bring all of her church friends over and they would literally like hang out at the dining room table for days, like a week. Right. And they would just sit in there and pad oysters all week. Uh, getting ready for the supper. <laughs> yeah, getting ready for the supper. Uh, it was cool. And, you know, you had to pad them and then put them on the wax paper, put them in the refrigerator. Uh, after 24 hours, you had to take them out, pat them again. I mean, it was this whole process. Pro right. I don't know where they kept them all. I mean, they padded enough oysters for a for a fire hall in the ice supper. <laughs> well, I, I'm assuming they went somewhere after Grandma's dining room. But I'll, I always remember that and it was pretty cool yeah and that, i mean that was one of my <clears throat> we, we were just talking about that that was one of my grandfather's favorite foods yeah like fried oysters but everything had to be crispy yeah super crispy super crispy uh and then after after the after eating as many oysters as we could they would let you climb on the fire truck which was cool that was so much fun <laughs> what um so you do you do a lot of charity work around town. Mm -hmm. I know you do stuff with the Ed Reed Foundation, mm -hmm. um, Oyster Recovery Partnership. Yep. So so what is the because at every event there's always a fuck it there to recycle the shells. Right. So I guess if you know if you can talk a little bit about the importance of the uh, of the conservation and recycling those shells. Yeah, I mean. Um... <clears throat> That's like really when I started doing the pop-ups, that was one of the things that was really starting to interest me was, um, you know, how the conservation and the restorative, you know, restoration worked. Because uh, was, that was around the time that I really, like, you know, it used to be you would go to a restaurant and order oysters right that was it yeah you didn't know where they were from sometimes you get blue points but it was just oysters and um <clears throat> people kind of woke up uh, about 15 years ago and you know we realized that uh for for how do i say all intents and purposes sure is it all intensive purposes this is I think I, intense and purposes i think intense for yeah i think for all intents. oh like okay yeah. So for, it could be, they could be intensive purposes too, I guess. Right, but. I always picture the tents. <laughs> like for, a grain of salt? <laughs> yeah. Like a grain of salt? <laughs> for all intents and, <laughs> and purposes, purposes. Um, there aren't any wild oysters left in the Chesapeake Bay. Oh, wow. They've, they're, they've, been, they've all been eaten a long time ago. And it's hard to, you know, <clears throat> repopulate something when, when they're, they're essentially gone. So... Um, that's when I started the local oyster and, I, you know, I, from day one, um, I started recycling shells, uh, because, uh, my buddy George, my mentor, mm -hmm. actually, um, he had the idea to start the, uh, shell recycling Alliance. Okay. Yeah. They named it after star Wars. Cause one of the guys was a star Wars nerd. <laughs> nice. Um, and, um, yeah, he, he's the one that kind of realized that, you know, all these shells were going into trash cans. Uh, so I started spreading the word and, and uh, tried to and reminded everyone to recycle their shells. And everyone would ask, you know, what, what are you doing? And, um, you know, 15 years later, like the first thing people ask when they walk up to the bar is like, do you recycle your shells? Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, we're kind of one of the first ones to do it. So what does recycling them do? What do they do with the shells after? Uh, so the shells um, get picked up weekly, um, and then they're composted for about a year uh, just to kind of kill off any microbes. Yeah. Because, you know, if, if you put a shell from uh, <clears throat> uh, the Pacific Northwest in the Chesapeake Bay and it had an organism on it that is not, you know, natural Native to... The, to right? the bay it could do a lot of damage and that actually happened in the delaware bay like back in the 60s and 70s i think um so uh they compost the shells and then they put them into giant tanks and they introduce larva baby oysters into the water right 
and then the uh, the larva attached to the shells, and that's when they set. They're called spat, spat mm -hmm. on shell. I'm mm -hmm. sure you've heard that. Um, and then you know, once they get to a certain size, they take those shell with spat and put them back into the bay, and then they start growing and start reproducing naturally. So um, yeah, it's it's really good and, and important and um, you know oysters are like uh, they're a keystone species for the Chesapeake so without them there wouldn't be um, you know there wouldn't be seagrass or or crabs or perch or rockfish you know they are kind of um, the key and the and the far and, and now they're all being farmed Right. And that's where they're all on farms and that's helping to sustain. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, like bay, our yeah. farm, we've got about give or take anywhere between three and five million oysters in the water at, at one time. Right. Um, and they all get eaten and they all go back into the bay. So if you think about all of the restaurants in Maryland, Delaware, Virginia, D.C., and you're collecting all those shells and planting, like I think last year, the ORP put 1.2, 1.5 billion bee wow. babies into the, into Chesapeake. So, um, got to start somewhere. Yeah. Like, uh, you know. Well, like, that's a good segue. So we're going to take a break really fast and eat some oysters. Awesome. And then put the shells back in the bag. Great. I need a break. I'm getting tired. <laughs> Get a sip of the ride. Give to United Way. Your gift could be the first spark of something bigger. It can help someone find, interview for, and get hired for a job and provide follow up services for success. It can break down educational barriers and give that extra help to a struggling student with in school support programs. Give today. Spark something bigger. The No Picks After Dark podcast is fueled by Zeke's Coffee. Have you tried their coffee yet? I'm telling you, there's something different about it. Maybe it's because they roast their beans in a fluid coffee roaster, which provides the most accurate roasting temperatures and made with love. You will just have to check it out for yourself and try their delicious food while you're at it. Open now for curbside service, online ordering, carry out, and they also do wholesale. Visit Zeke's Coffee at 4719 Hartford Road, open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Sunday, 8 to 5 p.m. Kitchen closes at 3 p.m., or visit Zeke'sCoffee.com, and you too can be fueled by Zeke's. Welcome back to the No Food Picks After Dark podcast. <clears throat> We're here with Nick from The Local Oyster, who has brought oysters from the oyster farm that we were just talking about so tell us a little bit about what we have here uh yeah these are these are huckleberries these are a little two two and a half year old guys a uh, really plump uh cocktail petite oyster yeah buttery soft salt really nice and that's a massive oyster that's a that's the one this your head's not that big uh, well yeah but this is a chunky dunker i see why it's called that yeah, so that's uh that's about five years old. Wow. Um, so I guess we'll open one. Yeah, take us through. Okay. Without I, putting the knife I, in your hand. Yeah. So I, I used to chuck like this. Yeah. Until I, put the knife completely through my hand. You don't want to do that. I'm don't I don't. I mean, we do would that. go viral, but. So I, don't know if that'd be I usually kind of idea. work on a on a block, but this is will be the first time I've shucked in my hand since the incident. Oh man. So pressure's on. If uh, <laughs> if so I, you if do I it from cut the... a tendon, it's your fault. Okay. Uh, so boy. you do it from the opposite end. You don't do it from the end where it. Well, you do it from like the hinge. What do you call that? I like if I was on a block, I'd go in through the side. Okay. Sometimes. Gotcha. Yeah. But you know, I'm in there, in the hinge. Yeah. Uh, the that was easy. That you didn't name? even see that happen, right? No. Um, so kind of give it a little, 
pop. Wait, wait. What's that? You ASMR? Do the ASMR. Yeah. Yeah. Here, let's do this. This is gonna be cool. So then you gotta cut the inductor. Look at it. Yeah. It's there beautiful. it is. So now you have to now you have to do the slurping. Oh, ready? <laughs> <laughs> mm, how is it? It's delicious. <laughs> now we need I can't stand oysters, man. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I love them. Do you get tired? Are I, you tired I, of them by now? Or no? I, I, I don't eat them as much as I used to. Well, right, yeah. But like if I go somewhere else and, you know, I get them shucked for me. Then you're okay. What's yeah. your favorite oyster? Um, Other than yours, obviously. I, it's, I don't know. Yeah. What's your, what's I, your I mean, favorite? I, like the, I like West Coast ones. I like yeah. West Coast oysters, I feel like. Yeah, I, feel I like... think I, I like, uh, I'll go to Dylan's when yeah. I want some tasty yeah. West Coast oysters. Because, you know, you can't eat, like these guys, you could slurp down a couple dozen. Those uh, Kumamoto's and Olympia's, yes. they're, they're really kind of complex. Those. Yeah. Yeah, they're That's awesome. the name I wanted. Yeah. Thanks for saying it. But, um. You know, you can only eat uh, six or twelve of those at a time, and yeah, that's 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 about good. Yeah, um, we're going to the um, Thames Street, Thames Street Oyster House tonight, so I'm excited to do a little, ooh, a little Candace. oyster. I love her; she's great. Yeah, she's great. When, I think that's one of my favorite restaurants for sure. Yeah, um, I actually, uh, yeah, it was sad, uh, but I she asked me to chuck oysters at her dad's celebration of life oh, wow. party when he passed away. So uh, that's kind of how nice I got honor. to meet her when yeah. I was getting started, and yeah, actually, she um, going to to charitable events. Right. Yeah. Um, the first one we ever did was for St. Jude's Children's Center, mm-hmm. and Candace donated the oysters, and I shucked them. Oh, nice. So that was kind of and so and so began your charity work. Yeah. That I mean, that was it. That yeah. was the first one, and you know, I went home and I was like, "This is." I just felt so good. And uh, I just, it, you know, when you give back, people start, uh, people pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Can we I, have some more? Do it. Yeah, do it. here we go. It's a beautiful sound. Yeah. That's just loud. Ah. <laughs> That's loud. Oyster. Oyster. Look at that. Here, that one's for That's you. Beautiful. That is How? a I perfect can't... oyster. Can... Okay. I can't, can't move. They got me can't. strapped yeah. into yeah. the microphone. Oh, oh, my notes. Oh, well. Who needs them? So, in addition to... Am I, am I still good? So, in addition to oysters, you have a lot of other stuff on all of your menus, including your grandmother's crab soup. It's really my grandmother's recipe. Yeah. I tweaked it a little tiny bit. Yeah. Uh, she used to... Uh, she used to boil beef bones into the stock. And okay. I kind of took that out. So uh, it was a... Some people weren't... For our vegetarian friends. Yeah, I, that adds a lot. Because yeah. my dad makes a crab soup. That's amazing too. Mm-hmm. And he starts with like a seafood stock. Yeah. Then puts in like a ham hock. Yep. Chews up some steak. Does bacon. It used to have bacon. Yeah, yeah I took the bacon out. I forgot yeah. about that. With the, I, well, I think one of the keys is that he'll take steamed crabs, peel them essentially... And put the peeled bodies in, and mm-hmm. let that um, soak overnight and heat overnight. And then, once it's done, takes it out, picks the crabs, and puts that meat back in. And it makes a very like a super super that's, rich. That's a lot of work. It's a ton of work. Yeah. yeah. And he does it in this like fifteen gallon pot. Cool. I'll yeah. Show you the I'd s- some that smell. Yeah. It's you know just like grandma patting the oysters. Right. Same thing. Same grandma. Right. Same kitchen. <laughs> Same kitchen? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I could, it's, it's like you say that the sense of smell is that one that kind of triggers the memories. Right. What part of the brain? I don't know. Uh, um, but yeah, every time I it. smell it, like even to this day when they're making it uh, down at the restaurant, it just it triggers that feeling. Yeah. It's cool. The other thing that I love at the local oyster, and it might be a true Chesapeake too, is the Crab Imperial. Mm-hmm. Oysters, mm-hmm. like the roasted oysters. Yeah. Who is, is that another one of your? I mean, who comes up with all these recipes? A team um, effort. So, uh, our executive chef and partner is yep. uh, Zach Mills. Zach Mills, yeah. So uh, he's, you know, 
pretty much the the man behind uh, the recipes. Um, a, a lot of the tr uh, a lot of the local oyster recipes. I mean, they're not much involved. Yeah, you steam shrimp with onions. You know, you don't right. you don't need a chef but to do that. A lot of times, that's the best though. It is I mean, the right. Sim the simple recipes are the ones that taste super simple. Um, <clears throat> but we do have a few items, you know, and that's where a chef comes in and and works his magic. And you know, when we were doing the 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 menu for Locust Point, I you know we kind of wanted it to remind you of what the what it used to be like before. Right. You know, b before everyone started trying too hard. Well, right. And, and it's great because, you know, there aren't that many old school seafood houses around, crab right. houses around. But the local oyster is the modern take on that. It, exactly. Right. So do you actually understand what we're trying to <laughs> <Yes>. do? <laughs> and I go there on random days. When, you do. When it's nice I, I see you quite a bit. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but like uh, Crab Imperial, that was something that. I'm sure you know. Growing up in Baltimore, right. you you had that's what you got for special occasions. Yeah, my mom always made it for New Year's Eve, like we would have crab imperial and filet mignon. You yeah. know, anniversaries, so good. Uh, birthdays, you know, all whenever we have a dinner party, crab imperial. So, but you, I don't know anywhere in Baltimore that like has it on the menu anymore. No, there aren't a lot of places. Um, I mean, I bet if you went like to Costas like Costas has it, yeah, you, like those the old school. Like if crowd. you got outside of the city, like Dundalk, yeah, Glen Burnie, I'm sure there are some places. Yeah, and, and another kind of dying Baltimore tradition is the fried hard shell crab. Uh, yeah. Do you like, have that? Yeah. So I was mentioning earlier, like yeah. my 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 one grand my grandparents. My one set of grandparents lived about a mile that way, and my other set of grandparents lived about about a mile that way. Yeah. So we're like, this is my old stomping ground. Well, from when I was a kid, and Bo Brooks used right. to be right yeah. around the corner, yeah. and they had the um, the fried hard crab. To be honest, I never understood it. Even it's, as a kid, it was like, I, it's just it's like eating it's not, dough. It's inconvenient, off of, and then you right. have to. There's a, there's an easier way. You just fry, there is. A, fry a crab cake in that dough. <laughs> <laughs> and that's called a crab fluff. Right, right. So, yeah, that's true, true. Yeah. So they were always on the menu together. It was the fried hard crab and the crab fluff. We'd always get If you want to pick a crab and also enjoy a crab cake. Yes. It was like <laughs> your the dad fried hard shell. putting the crab in the soup and then right. taking and then, it out and, then and then picking it, it and then yeah. putting it back in. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of work. Sometimes it's worth it. Yes. So you have <clears throat> the local oysters, True Chesapeake. What advice would you give to someone opening a restaurant right now don't do don't. it <laughs> I, know, <laughs> you I, knew that was I knew you were gonna say that <laughs> don't do it <laughs> uh yeah i mean just be passionate about what you do you know make yeah. sure you're in it or committed um you know uh, it's it can be very very difficult uh and especially with three locations and you know, bouncing back and forth. We are constantly have staffing issues, uh, you know, uh, and, and equipment breaks down and, right. and, um, you know, things don't show up when they're supposed to. It's, 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 a it's, it's a hard job, but it's very, uh, rewarding and gratifying like when you get to the end of the day and you know you figured it out and all it's essentially about making people feel good feeding them right so that's kind of you know that makes it all worthwhile to me anyway yeah yeah like final final thought final thought what if there's any what do you want the audience to know if anything um, you can shout out the restaurant about what <laughs> whatever whatever you want. <laughs> hmm. What do I want the people to know? Um, I would just say, I would just tell the listeners, hey, Baltimore, be nice to each other. That's, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, uh, that's kind of what hospitality is about. Right. If someone comes in a, comes in, in a shitty mood, 
Your job is to make them leave feeling better. Um, and it's the same, you know, just walking down the street. You see somebody who's just not having a great day, say something nice. Yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of, it's hospitality in a nutshell. You know, say, hey, I, yeah. I like that hat. Or, I like that hat. Yeah, thanks. It's this one. <laughs> um, yeah, so just be nice to each other. And, uh, you know, it will reciprocate and um, we'll all be better for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming on here and letting me interview you. Thank you. We've known for, each other for a long time. I, I <laughs> wish we had headphones. It would have Next felt time. like a real podcast. Next time when I get, when I blow up and I'm like, <laughs> don't blow and, up. And then I'm going to have to pay you. <laughs> that would be messy. <laughs> We'd have to get you off the walls. Here. Cool. Yeah, Thanks, so can, Chris. Yeah, we can find you at True Chesapeake, the local oyster. The local oyster.com, true, true Chesapeake.com. We're on the interwebs, the Instagrams. At the local oyster, at True Chesapeake. Yep. Make your reservations. Make your reservations on Open Table. And um, hopefully I'll get to see you and put some food into your face. Perfect. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. See you later, guys. Never seen so many.